Now I'm going to show you how to get a stick on your SD5. The stick response is a neuromuscular response that happens when we rub our fingers on the plate and when we get to a resonance peak it causes a slight neuromuscular response as well as a, a galvanic skin response. And this response is what we call the stick. The stick is what we use to determine where the resonance peak is of a specific IDF pattern. So scroll down until you get to main programs, then press enter and up comes the first program is stick no stick, stick practice, and uh, go ahead and press enter again and it says auto or manual. We're going to use auto so make sure it says auto and then you can press enter and it says balancing time. We'll let it go about four seconds so scroll down until you get to four seconds then press enter. Delay we'll leave that at one second so that's okay. Number of cycles. Let's practice let's say about ten times. So scroll up using the up arrow until you get to the number 10 and then press enter. So when it says no stick then you want to start rubbing on the plate until it changes and you can see my instrument actually started sliding around. So when it says no stick again take your fingers off the plate and uh, let's wait for the next cycle. You don't want to do it from stick uh, to no stick. Okay it says no stick rubbing on the plate and it just grabs the fingers. Now this is a very good way to test your stick in the beginning is to get a slippery piece of material and put it underneath of your SE5 and so that when you get a stick it will uh, move the whole instrument by, by grab, when it grabs your fingers. Let's try it once more. Wait for it to say uh, no stick again. Okay, no stick. Rub on the plate and you can put quite a bit of pressure on the there it says stick. Okay, see how my fingers just stop right on the plate? Now some people have very, very dry skin and for those people you might want to use a little bit of baby oil on the ends of the fingers. People that have very, very oily skin might want to use a little baby powder. On your CD that came with your SE5-1000 you'll find a complete copy of the Biofield Research Manual and the beginning training manual. Now I've printed mine out and put it together in a binder like this and you might want to do that also for reference. So if you haven't done that yet go ahead and print out the beginning training manual and I'll proceed from there. Before we begin any analysis with the SE5-1000 we want to go through the initial tests. There are five different tests that we want to check to make sure that our environment is clear and that there are no blockages from working with the SE5. So use your down arrow and select main programs then select enter then scroll down until you get to initial tests then press enter. It says auto or manual. In this case we want to use manual. So go ahead and press enter. It should come up with the tuning 99996900 blockages. Your settings should be on measure, normal, and we're going to use the 100 scale. So it should say 0.0, .0 if you're dialed all the way down. Now this is a negative tuning, so you'll want to start at 0. So if you, if you haven't already, go ahead and dial your amplitude knob all the way down to 0, counterclockwise. Begin by rubbing on the plate, and I'm going to dial up until I feel that stick. There, you see how the, the instrument sort of started moving around and my fingers stuck right on the plate. So mine is 0.4%, which is very low, which means there are no blockages in working with the SE5-1000. Now if you find that you have over 15%, perhaps it is better for you then to work at a different time or perhaps on a different subject. So I'm going to dial back down to zero, press my down arrow, and it goes to 8722119 interference A. So I'm going to dial up from zero. 6.9. Again, this is below 15%, which means that I'm well within the, the tolerance for interferences. Now, if you find you have interference A, B, C, or D that are above 
you might want to find a different area to work in, a different place, or sometimes even just turning the instrument in a different direction will clear the interference. These interferences could be electromagnetic, they could be geopathic stresses, or it could even be negative thought forms. So if you find that your interferences are over 15%, don't try to balance them. Just go ahead and try a different uh, location to work in. So I'm going to press the down arrow again, interference B. And we'll start from zero. This one's 5.9. So there's a little bit of interference, but really not enough to affect my readings. So I'm going to press the down arrow again, interference C. This one's 1 1.2, it's very low, so that's good. And last one, interference D, this one's 0.8. So all five of my tests have passed for blockages, interference A, B, C, and D, so it's okay for me to continue doing my analysis. Just make sure if you're over 15% on any one of those readings that you might want to find a different location to work in or perhaps work on your subject at a different time or choose a different subject. Next I'd like to go through a basic analysis using the subtle balance program. You'll find it in Roman numeral number 7 on page 22 of your beginning training manual. If you haven't printed it out like I have into a notebook then you'll find it on your software disk under the PDF file of the beginning training manual part 1. So go ahead and open that up or print out just that page if you'd like to and then we'll follow along in the book and with the program at the same time. So I've opened up my book to Roman numeral 7, page 22, or if you want you can just print out that page and use it as your uh, chart. I've already loaded the program, the subtle balance program, in my SE5 and I'm ready to take my first measurement. Now your settings should be at measure, normal, and 100 percent. The first tuning, 906, 2755 says align chakras and if you look in your chart it's a positive tuning has a plus in front of it so we're going to start at 100 percent if it's a negative tuning you start at zero if it's a positive tuning you start at 100 so this one's a positive tuning so I'm going to start at 100 percent and I'm going to start dialing down from 100 until I get a stick and I get a stick at 95.3 so I make a note of that on my chart 95.3%. Now, this is not very low. Normally I would be looking for a tuning that is like below 85% in order to balance. But just for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to balance this tuning. I'm going to dial up to 100% because that's where I want the tuning to go to. And I'm going to switch from measure to balance by pressing on the measure balance button one time. So now instead of receiving the intrinsic data field information patterns from my system, it's now sending the corrective IDF patterning to my biofields. So we'll wait just a couple of seconds and we'll see how it turns out. So now I've let it balance for some time and I'm going to switch back from balance to measure. And in order to get back to measure from balance, you need to press three times because first is balance with the light cable if you have your light cable connected it will light up and then balance with a pulse and that pulses your light cable on and off as I've shown you before in one of the demonstrations. So press it one more time and it goes back to measure and I can take a measurement from 100 and now it's at 100 percent which is where I want it to be. So I press my down arrow the next tuning is 9424459 oral balance. Again this is a positive tuning so I'm going to start at 100 And this one's about 95% as well. So I'm not going to bother balancing this one. I'll keep going until I find something that's more than 15% out of balance. So I press the down arrow. Now the next one is autotoxicity. It's a negative tuning. If you notice in your book, it has a minus in front of it. Now in the manual, most of the tunings you'll find, if they don't have a plus in front of them, that means they're a negative tuning. On this chart, we've added the plus and the minus because it's not such a big chart. So this one's a negative tuning, which means I start from 0% and its ideal state should be 0%. And I'm going to dial up from 0 
and I get 3.7. Again, this one is not very far out of balance, so I'm going to skip it and go on to the next tuning, which is balance. Balance is a positive tuning, so I'll start at 100. And this one's about 86, so that's pretty close. I think I'll go ahead and balance that one. So I'm going to make a note of that one because it's a little bit low. 86.8%. So again, I dial up to 100, and I switch from measure to balance by pressing the measure balance button, and I'll wait for a couple of minutes, and then I'll come back after it's finished balancing. <laughs> 